Welcome back to episode four of We've Done the Maths, a pedestrian TV vodcast. I'm Jules Rangi Heiwe, ex reality TV star, failed, uh, ex podcaster, and lover of all things trash telly. And I'm Chantel Schmidt, pedestrian TV's resident, married at first sight recapper. We said goodbye to two couples. Mm, so Shannon and Caitlin mm-hmm. and Melissa and Josh. Mm-hmm. They needed to go. They did. That storyline, so boring. It was getting boring. So boring? It what do getting, you mean? It was just getting boring. I was kind of like, oh, he's just going to always be a misogynistic pig throughout the whole thing. He needs to go. Yeah, true. I don't think we needed to put ourselves through mm. any more of that, nor did Caitlin or Josh need to put themselves through that pain anymore. So... Goodbye, good riddance, and step back into your power, Caitlin. Step back into your power, Josh. Run it. Oh, hallelujah, yeah. as he says. <laughs> and we said hello to two new couples. Oh, God, we did. So there was there was Evelyn and mm. Rupert, the shy boy. From... I know we, we, we will say this again and again, but that name, Rupert, that is, that's so mean for a mother to do that. It's the name of um, Ron from Harry Potter, I know. True, but still, he wasn't a catch, was he? <laughs> You're such a bitch. <laughs> well, let's get straight into the cheating scandal. That's all I can think about. Okay, yeah, it was a lot this week, wasn't it? Yeah. So earlier in the season, obviously, we had the Adam and Claire rumours got swept under the rug. You know, Jesse was made to feel like he was crazy, that he was insecure, that he was, you know, all in his head. Mm-hmm. And then we find out it was all true. Intuition never lies. In your heart of hearts, when all that was going down and Jesse was on the couch and he was like, oh, well, I'm so sorry, guys, I I messed up. Were you like, no, you didn't. Your intuition was bang on and they're just going to try and drag this out. Or were you like, they were just trying to make a story. They were trying to make something from nothing. The producers. I think that the producers saw an opportunity when uh, Adam and Claire made him feel like crazy man. Mm-hmm. And then they realised that it's going to come out and that was the perfect way to highlight gaslighting, the perfect way to highlight how not to apologise to someone, the perfect way to showcase Adam for the crypto dog that he really is. So let's go back, the gaslighting, because I feel like that was one of the biggest themes this week. It was so, so bad. We saw it from not only the dog, Adam, which we expect, But Claire, and she did not even flinch, which worries me. Yeah, when you sort of play back the tapes, it's concerning, hey, because she was really just finger pointing at Jesse, you know, well, you can't act like this, you're being possessive, you're being this, while knowing what she had done. I mean, I need to go to acting school because there is no way I would be able to lie like these Mm -hmm. people do. I think as well it's the mimicking of the voice that really threw me. I was kind of like, wow, that is low, that's really low. I think that the whole thing around pointing the finger at Jesse, making him feel insecure, making him feel crazy is just such a huge reflection on any man that has ever cheated on a woman or any woman that's ever cheated on a man. Mm -hmm. As soon as they get the accusation, they go, oh, well, what, don't you trust me? She's just a deflection. And this is exactly what's happened to Jesse. And you see it, you know, he laughs when he finds out because it's so comical that this ended up being true. Mm. And I think as well, Adam always talking so fast at him with what we know from Jesse is, you know, he's always like, I don't really like the crowds. I don't like loud things. It was almost like, I'm going to throw this at you knowing damn well, you're not going to be able to catch it so I can get away scot-free. Yeah, it was really horrible. And then even when Jesse confronted him, right? Mm. Like Adam still was just beating around the bush, making him seem like he was being the, you know, aggressor, making Jesse feel like he was you know, acting out of line or being Mm. over the top. And it's like, he's literally calling you out at this point, wear it, be accountable, which is something that this man, Adam, just has no capability of doing. Just when I thought that man couldn't get lower, he adds in about Claire, oh, you know what she was like that night. I, my jaw dropped to the floor when he said that. I'm like, he is not really going to point his finger at Claire and make this her fault, is Mm -hmm. he? Which is exactly what he did. It's so horrible. And it just, it's something that's played out throughout the dinner party as well, where the girls are just, you know, shunning Claire, not talking to Claire. It's all about Claire. And even the Married at First Sight expert, Mel Schilling, put her hand up and said, hold on, where's Adam in this Mm -hmm. equation? Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, people always think that misogynists are men. 
And sometimes there's ingrained misogyny in women as oh, well. I would say even from our collective experience, misogyny in women runs so deep, they are not aware of it. A hundred percent. And it was horrible to watch. Poor mm. Claire, mm -hmm. you know, she really like, I say poor Claire, but you know, I know that she did something bad. I'm but, still backing poor Claire, by the way, but we're going to get into this. Yeah. She crawled out of this the best that she possibly could. Mm -hmm. You know, the way that she took accountability, she didn't blame it on alcohol. You know, she said, you know what? Yeah, like we were drinking, but I can't blame it on alcohol. I was aware of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. She's the one that's told Jesse. She's the one that's come out into the open. And she's the one that's just saying, I'm really sorry and taking accountability. Adam, however. This, none of this would have come out unless Claire said something none of this he was so happy living his life well i don't know janelle told us there's a bit of a fame ho so mm. we've been on like 10 shows so yeah so maybe it doesn't come on this one otherwise we're going to be eating our words <laughs> hello darling god well i want to go back to the misogyny within women because something that did not sit right with me was Alyssa. yeah uh you freaking hypocrite what do you mean i was grabbing my laptop screen screaming isn't this not the same woman who had an affair with a married man for six months right so now she's like i won't talk to anyone who you know does the wrong thing she Hello? was even giving duncan a hard time because duncan was like i think he's done the wrong thing i'm not too sure how to navigate this etc he Alexa, gave an amazing speech play man in the mirror seriously so yes, a bit off Alyssa this week, which breaks my heart because I was really feeling sorry for the Mormon girl for a second there, but I'm off it. She plays sweet and innocent. I'm not buying it. Mm -hmm. But Adam, flicking the blame, you know, once he knew- I thought that, you were going to say flicking the bean flicking then. Flicking the bean? Well, <laughs> we hope so. But flicking the blame <laughs> straight from Claire, once he knew that Claire was kind of standing in her truth and was like, I fucked up, we fucked up, let's own this. He runs to Janelle and tries to throw it onto her. What are we thinking? Well, firstly, I'm thinking, is there any other thing, person, object that Adam can blame in this situation? Mm. He's blaming the vape. <laughs> he's blaming Claire. Now he's blaming Janelle. I'm like, okay, is, is everyone's mum safe? Because mm -hmm. he's going to blame them too. Like, shit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Adam sleeping with Janelle the night that he comes home from kissing Claire with his stanky vape breath, I hope it was banana, yes. it's just not right. That is such a horrible, horrible thing for Janelle to have found out, knowing in her head what they did that night. Mm. And after we had spoken to her, I feel like, and I don't know if you've got the same vibe, that I kind of felt like she really liked him for a second there. She said they were like sleeping together, kissing and cuddling on the couch. I only have to do that with a man like twice before I'm like, you're my husband. Oh, I'm like one hour in. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, what wedding dress? Just the last name suit. So my heart was breaking for her. Like I felt what she, and I think a lot of women around Australia could relate to that scene in the hall where you're breathless, but you don't want anyone to see you, but you kind of want to just die in a hole then and there. Yeah. And you know what pisses me off about Adam is if you look back to his relationship with Janelle, I might be wrong, but... I don't think that she liked him that much when mm. she first met him and she has compromised things that she would normally go for mm -hmm. to try and give this experiment a red hot go. Mm -hmm. And now she's been humiliated. Mm -hmm. She's going, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a crack. He's not my usual type. He doesn't have a career, but fuck it. Mm. And then now she's gone and put her whole heart into this and he's gone, you know what? I'm going to shit on that. Doesn't the phone experiment make complete sense now? But I want to know what was in the phone. Same. I wonder if producers are going to leak that eventually. That's content. Mm -hmm. That's content. And I understand this humiliation from firsthand experience. Mm -hmm. It's not something that just goes away. But Jules, have you mm -hmm. ever been cheated on? I have. I haven't. I have. I, my intuition says I have. I found a pair of um, black lacy underwear in my boyfriend's top drawer. Um, what is what I other know. reason? <laughs> what other reason? Okay, now saying this out loud, I was like twenty one. So Aww. now saying this out loud, I was like, "Fuck!" He definitely was cheating, but he also he always said no. But I'm gonna own up and I'm gonna say that I have actually cheated on a partner. Mm, dirty dog, I know you have. I know, and you, I know you were there that night, which we won't go into on this podcast. <laughs> but. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to be cancelled, but I see both sides of the coin. I don't see what Jesse and Claire did 
At the time when Jesse was treating her like a piece of shit, I'm sure we said this on this first episode, that we were horrified by the things he was saying and the things he was constantly put down. And I don't know. I feel like if she went out that night and she had a man, ugh, even though it was Adam, you know, whispering sweet nothings in her ear, I'm going to say I would have probably treated as well. Well, you would have, yeah. No, yeah, I'm kidding. I <laughs> no, I would have. I would have and I, I kind of almost... I'm going to I'm going to double down on my girl Claire and I'm going to back her. Yeah, we do love Claire and I think that, you know, what we saw at the dinner party, I think this shows that it's done for Adam and Janelle. That's over. Goodbye. He's the one in my opinion that's in the wrong because they're in a good place. Mm-hmm. Whatever he says, I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. They were not in a good they were in a good place. And then Jesse and Claire they looked like they were – that was cute the at the end. are setting it up that they will actually have a great, like, love story or, like, a love friendship. And what do you <laughs> think, platonic. though? Do you think they can come back from this? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I weirdly think they will because now Claire is so – licking her wounds so bad, she'll do anything mm. and he'll love that. So one thing that I want to talk to you about is a theme that we saw throughout this week and it came up time and time again, toxic masculinity, right? It came up across multiple couples. I don't know if people realise this. People immediately are going to assume that we're talking about Melissa and Josh Mm. because that was the obvious one. But I'm seeing it in our new bride, Taylor, as well. Let's park that for a second because I really want to get back to Melissa and Josh. I feel like they're a distant memory. I'm not going to lie. Oh, it feels like forever ago. But justice for Josh. I'm glad to see him off spreading his wings, watching Disney movies, doing his daddy thing. We have been seeing TikToks of Daddy Josh up at the Coogee Pav. They need to sponsor us after this because we've shouted them out that much. Uh, he looks hot. He's hot. I you always... so would. Hey, the, he's very your type. Yeah. Maybe this is a thing. Maybe all your years of riding for pedestrian, the recaps has led you to Josh. <laughs> to, to my very own daddy. <laughs> I don't have daddy issues. What? <laughs> um, look, I think that I kind of had this inkling that he was like a little bit of um, a closet – Babe. I don't know where you're going with that question. Oh, no. Yeah, like you see babe. like the upside jumper and stuff in his intro reels. Like I was like, he's kind of cool. But the only thing, the downfall, and we will get into toxic masculinity. The only downfall is that he couldn't look at the Kama Sutra book. He had never seen any of those toys. Babe, we're beyond that. Yeah, he had some issues with the toys. He's like, oh, it looks like something uh, from JB Hi-Fi. I don't think, I don't know. I think that maybe I too would eat him alive. Okay. Well, <laughs> eating him alive. Melissa absolutely got fucking destroyed on that couch good she deserved it Uh, agreed let's talk about some things that she said that potentially people don't realize is toxic masculinity 101 the biggest one being you're not a man why why is he not a man and i think duncan said it the best right when he jumped in i'm going to quote him directly he said one of the most frustrating things is when someone says you're not a man what is a man a man is someone who can really talk about their emotions and get deep and be vulnerable that's a man. What a man isn't is someone who just wants to chop it up and not talk about anything. To me, that's not a man. God, that man, Duncan. I can't, he can't get any hotter. Like he can't is... get any hotter. He's a dream boat. But yes, yes, agree with everything he has said. I think that boys will be boys saying is so detrimental. What women don't realize they're doing that they're actually setting up almost the next generation to fail and in turn those boys who are raised to have that boys will be boys perpetuate, you know, physical and emotional harm onto women because of that thought process. Agreed. You know, it's like it's the chain. Yes. And it has so many other issues. Like there's not just a one problem with toxic masculinity. Mm. It goes so far and wide, you know, and like the toxic masculinity issue is that sitting there and saying that he's not a man because he doesn't talk about his feelings. And it's the same thing that we saw with Celine and Anthony last season is stopping men from talking about their feelings. We've seen the male suicide rates. Mm. This needs to stop. And thank God someone like Duncan stepped up and said something. Mm. It's mm-hmm. horrible. Mm-hmm. I'm also really grateful for producers this year for actually bringing light onto that because I think if the roles were reversed, we would be naturally outraged. Imagine if a guy sat there and said, oh, you know what? This is exactly what happened with Shannon. You're not a woman, you're not my type, etc. We dragged him. And mm. for all these men, unless the experts and unless producers really um, emphasize that, it would have flown under the radar. Yeah. So I, I'm really grateful. Yeah, I agree. And I'm so glad that Josh brought up the double standard here because it's been there since the beginning. And I think that him bringing light to it, to the mass experts, mm-hmm. Tani sitting there agreeing, like, finally, 
people can see this the tides for what might it be is. Changing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought the tides would be changing, and then we meet our new bride, Taylor. Oh, what was your th- initial thoughts over Taylor? Um, look, it was a hot mess, and I say that quite literally. She's hot, mm-hmm. and it was messy. Mm-hmm. You know, like mm-hmm. her limo ride there was chaos. I was like, I have a headache just watching this. She's like, you know, what if he's a freak? I'm like, honey, I don't think you should be worried about whether he's a freak. I actually liked it. What a breath of fresh air. No. (laughs) Can I just say, even for the dinner party, she fucking backed herself. She was like, I don't think we should be talking about that girl when she's not in the room or something along those lines. Yeah, but God, she doesn't listen to anything anyone has to say. She's just in and... No, I live for the chaos. I live for drama. It's fucking good TV and I loved it. And then it all went downhill. Okay, let's talk about the bed first before we get into her Mm. really nasty comments. Mm -hmm. Um, Her dominance is to be celebrated at times, but not when you do inhumane things like make a poor man sleep on a windowsill in the middle of bloody winter. And she just had no remorse about it. She wasn't even, this is the thing, she doesn't try and negotiate. There's no, Mm. okay, but you can sleep here for one night and then me tomorrow night. It's just, nah. Do we know how old she is? I'm just saying it's because she's got a very immature, that's how I would have acted in like year six. Like she's got a very immature way of thinking, in my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, she made it quite obvious that she was going to be a problem child, Mm -hmm. if you will, when she said, oh, when, you know, I break up with someone there by the end of it, they're they're broken. They're a shell of themselves. Not her exact words, but Mm -hmm. she basically said when she breaks up with someone, They're not who they were in the beginning and she's taken everything that they have to offer. Well, I feel like we're watching that in real time with poor Hugo. I have to bring up exactly what she said. Just circling back to that toxic masculinity chat, I feel like she might be our new Melissa. Can Mm. I just read you what she said? I pulled this up, did my my research. So... um, So Hugo, rightly so, says, what does a man look like to you? And she goes, um, tradie, footballer, bit rowdy and likes to drink beer. I'm laughing because it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous to me because stereotypically those type of men or those traits are misogynist. Mm. Stereotypically. Yeah, not everyone. We know this. We know this. We know this. And then there she is saying to Hugo, I need a man, man. Like she's putting him down while also like she is feeding the chain that we've just been talking about. Totally. And to say that Hugo is not a man just because he he doesn't have sports talk or something. Mm. She said something so ridiculous. And this poor man is breaking out knives. Right. I saw that too. I was like, wow, that heat rash is no joke. No joke, Hugo. (laughs) Casually getting redder and redder. At one point I was like, please Mm. send this man to the ER. This is not -hmm. not okay. I'm scared for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what she does so well. She's intimidating him and she's making him feel like he doesn't have a voice. And, you know, I do love when they flip the script a bit. You know, Mm. it's not always a woman in this position. It's not always a man in this position. And they say that this goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Well, I think we're going to see that play out throughout the whole season. I reckon that's what we're being set up for. I can see Hugo getting his victory, his triumph over Taylor. What's your predictions for that couple? Well, there was a news story like before this season had even started about a groom butt dialing his wife and calling her a C word. Nightmare fuel. Nightmares. That was Hugo and talking about Taylor. Okay, so they're just done. They're never going to fuck. They're never going to Well, of course they're not going to fuck. She called him a little puppy dog. <laughs> Did you see Mel Schilling? She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, dear. You know, yeah. Alessandra's shaking in her boots going, there's, there's no way I can yeah, help yeah, these yeah. two. That's not even friend zone. That's pity zone. Yeah. When so, you get called a little puppy dog. Yeah, I think he's going to snap. I think that Hugo, he's coming across as nice now, big Labrador energy, whatever, yeah, yeah. but... If he's butt dialing his wife and calling her a C-word, yeah. I don't care how C-word she is, you know, that's that's pretty hectic. Well, this week has been a bit heavy, so I want to shake things up. I want to get this room in a better energy, and I've got the perfect new intruder bride to come and help us do that. We've got Evelyn coming up after the break, so stay with us. Now, speaking of intruders, we are joined here today with the hottest bride of all, Evelyn. I hate the word intruder. Oh. It sounds so negative. I Why? prefer latecomer. 
Really? Like, intruder like, sounds funny. hot and like you're about to fuck shit up. It sounds scandalous. Like intruder. Are you scandalous? Um, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. Oh. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. Okay, she's media trained, guys. <laughs> We're going to have to redo the script. <laughs> okay, you by far had the hottest dress. What is the dress process with brides? Do you actually get to choose or do they give you top five? Thank God. God, you asked me this question because throughout the other seasons, no offense, past brides, but I was thinking, God, those dresses are awful. Did like I thought production picked the dress for you, but you actually get to pick your own dress. So you, yeah, they. Vol- what about the hairstyles? Some of the past hairstyles questionable. You get to pick your own hair, your own makeup, your own wardrobe. So I completely got to style myself. What's the budget for these dresses? Um. I don't think I'm allowed to say that, but it is generous. Okay. Worth, worth a well, shot. Worth a it's shot. It's a generous. They allocate um, a budget for yourself and your bridesmaids, but I didn't have any bridesmaids, so I spent it all on myself. Was that a personal choice? Yes, it was. Just because I feel like I've got a lot of good girlfriends and if I supplied a dress for every single one of my girlfriends I probably wouldn't have had a dress to wear I like that mm-hmm. so is that what so is that why you think you had the most stylish dress because you just didn't spend any money on your bridesmaids your non-existent bridesmaids spent it all on myself yes we love, love that, that. For you. <laughs> love that. you. okay we're obsessed with you already <laughs> okay so let's talk about your husband Rupert what kind of name that's a cat name that's a house cat name honestly when he told me his name was Rupert, I was like, no fucking way. I was like, no way. That's something that I would call like a poodle. Perfect. Rupert. Rupert the poodle. But I felt bad after that because I don't think he likes his name too much either. So Rupert, how are we feeling? So I think what I'm thinking and feeling is coming across pretty true to form on what we're watching right now. I knew the process was going to be really hard, but as I was trying to draw any type of conversation from Rupert, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be harder than I thought. Girl, you've done enough charity work in that episode alone. Does your back hurt from carrying every fucking conversation? I don't know how you kept your cool. You're, you're a braver woman than we are. I think I saw that he, like his call was... Like, he's genuinely a really good person. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't help but be kind and nice to him. But it did frustrate me sometimes where I'd be like, come on, give me something. It looks like I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. Like, it was as awkward on camera as it was for me at the wedding. So we know that during the honeymoon, you were saying how, you know, the massage was supposed to be sexy and everything. As we've just expressed our emotions, were you kind of getting into, as Jesse would say, eek territory? Like, or were you just, we genuinely like, maybe if we kissed or fucked, we might get into each other? Honestly, it was so far from eek territory because I feel like I was just trying to have a bloody conversation with this guy at the time. So, like, I think intimacy was so far down the line where I was, like, just getting to know him. Also, let's be completely honest here. Not everyone is good with three cameras in their face. Mm. Like not everyone is comfortable and confident enough. And I think once you like extract that from him, you understand Rupert a little bit more because it's a lot. Mm. Like I think the wedding day, there would have been like 15 cameras and a crew of like 30. Yeah. Mm. So it's really intense. It's a lot. Totally. Mm. It's a valid point. And with the bathroom scene, Just talk us through it. I'm glad they only showed a little bit of it because the whole honeymoon was extremely awkward. But watching it back, we both had a really big laugh about Mm. it. And like the Spanish music they had and then the just cracked me up. I watched it five times and I was in tears. Okay, moving on to the dinner party. You walked in looking snatched, so beautiful. That shot of your side boob had me dead. Did you see it? I I don't know about my side boob till now. This is news to me. You just got a very beautiful back and we admire it. Oh, thank you. How did you feel walking into such an, um, obviously we'll get into everything that happened, but walking into that, as we both know, energy doesn't lie. Like, did you feel something straight away? 
So obviously in every series, I knew like there's 24 people, 24 participants that do the experiment. I was like, listen, we all can't all be good eggs. Surely there's someone here with not the best morals or intentions. So I was like, okay, who is it? Who is it? But I didn't think walking in, it would have been like, holy crap, my first dinner party and there's a cheating scandal. Like I was blown away. But at the same time, I'm just like, oh God, the pressure's not on me. Mm. I was like, so it gave me kind of, I felt good analyzing and watching and seeing everyone's true colors at that point. So I, I thought that was helpful to help me judge everyone's characters and their personalities so for that i'm blessed Mm. one thing i did notice when you walked in was harrison's reaction what was his reaction he was it's almost as if you guys had known each other he was very like smirky like did you get that fun i was like there have they had a pash that could you have that vibe uh not that i know of really (laughs) no don't don't recall Pashing Harrison. I love path. that you noticed that as well. I noticed it. Sh- I clocked it straight away. I was like, they might have done things in a previous lifetime. That's I, the look. I actually got that vibe off Dan the most. Ooh. Dan. I got well, he's that vibe a off Dan. Guy. He is a Kunji <laughs> Pab guy. He's, very he's, guy. Playing, he's behind food. rounds, baby. <laughs> uh, just, what I will say is, this season there are a lot of twists and turns. The people that you think are authentic and genuine actually surprise you the most and the people that you think has villainous traits will also surprise you even more well we've seen it flip and turn almost every single episode was it hard for you um you know you definitely give off the vibe of being a girl's girl was it hard for you to walk into that dinner party and straight away the girls group was split was it hard to choose or was it not as obvious in the moment between kind of claire v janelle okay Imagine walking into a party, right? And a group of girls pull you aside and they say, that girl over there hooked up with my husband. And it's like the first time you're meeting these people, you're just like, what the actual hell is going on? But I will say, I think I was quick to judge. And a lot of that will play out throughout the season. And you guys will see what unfolds. When you say quick to judge, quick to judge what, who? So I know Claire right now is not getting the best edit, but in real life, I actually think she's an awesome girl. I love her fun loving character and yeah, I fuck with her. Yeah, Jules and I have fucked with Claire since the beginning of time. I I still do. I really like her and look, everyone makes mistakes. Yeah, well, the thing is, right, her and Jessie were in the shittest place when she kissed Adam, right? And then everyone's kind of, you know, pointing the finger at Claire and getting angry at her. Do you actually think that it's cheating given they'd only been together for a week? I think it was definitely an accident and a mistake. I think where Claire fucked up was kind of hiding it for so long and the gaslighting, like she should have came clean straight away listen we all make stupid mistakes especially when we're drunk but i don't think one mistake should define her whole identity as a person yeah Mm -hmm. agreed okay so as i've said every episode the hero becomes the villain i feel like you're getting a real hero uh image at the moment will we see you being the center of attention at a dinner party anytime soon I can confirm that there's going to be a little bit of an explosive scandal that will come out. It doesn't involve me hooking up with another husband or anything. It's honestly, when this happened, I don't think me and production and any of the participants could actually believe that this actually happened. But if you put 24 people in front of a camera, almost 24 seven, something juicy is definitely bound to happen. And I'm very proud that I stuck to my instincts at the time because with everything that's come out in the press and in the media, it all makes sense. And yeah, you guys will see. But um, I definitely hold the person accountable. Let's just say that. This actually isn't your first reality TV rodeo. Yeah, I've had a little television reality stint many, many moons ago. I think it was about 10 years ago. And you guys may have heard of the show. It's called Big Brother. Unique concept. Um, Yeah, I was living in the UK at the time and I really wanted to be a model. And 
little old me by myself is in the UK and terrible agent approached me and he's like you know I can get you modeling gigs and I've had like no I hadn't even done a shoot by this time so I'm like oh yeah this guy seems to know what he's talking about and he sent me the link he goes oh you should totally sign up for big brother and I was like okay seems like a good idea at this time of my life I was so insecure like you're 18 like Mm. I didn't know my left foot from my right so I decided to sign up for this crazy TV show and the next thing I remember is I'm being blindfolded and thrown into a van (laughs) and I'm about to go on stage in front of a roaring crowd and yeah look Big Brother wasn't my finest performance in life. I always get asked lots of questions about it and I always say imagine being 18 plowed with alcohol Mm -hmm. and then having cameras in your face and then going on live television oh i'd go to jail (laughs) (laughs) i almost did well okay well i can we can kind of tell that you don't want to delve into that too much but is there anything that you want to get into from your perspective that you've never been able to say in on a microphone about that experience or about that time in your life um I struggled a lot after when I left Big Brother. I don't think I was mentally in the right place to sign myself up to be in a situation to be so vulnerable, especially so young as well. And um, you just forget that I, I'm still living through the Big Brother stuff now, obviously, after signing up to marry a stranger I'm still seeing videos and pictures resurface from 10 years ago so for me that's hard to re-watch I don't think I'm ever going to fully be completely okay with it and yeah they say you shouldn't have any regrets but I can definitely say I've got a few yeah well on the topic of you know these these photos that are recirculating and that type of thing. I'm sure you've seen in the news this week the photos of you and Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about that, I Mm -hmm. guess, and, you know, bring any light to that situation. I mean, we definitely don't keep in contact now. One, he's in jail. Two, yeah, it's, it's definitely my old life and I think his old life. It all kind of blew up out of nowhere and I can't believe... They've found that photo and it's resurfaced. I did not expect that at all. Daily Mail. Daily Mail. They're good. Good old Daily Mail. (laughs) Are they good? Yeah. Okay. Um, Well, thank you for sharing that. I know it's an uncomfortable situation. You only had the information that you had at the time, right? Yeah. I mean, if you ask 18-year-old me if I saw this coming in the horizon, I'd be like, Andrew, no, no way. And it's just, yeah. I mean, if you look at the photo, he had hair then, so... Mm. Many, many moons ago. Well, babe, I don't know. I knew people that had hair last year and now they don't have hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, clearly a lot of growth has happened from yourself. Why on earth would you want to, after being put through what sounds like the absolute ringer with your Big Brother experience, why on earth another reality TV show? It really took me a lot to be in mentally the right space, to be vulnerable, to put myself out there because I felt like last time it went so badly and I was like, picking up the pieces for many many years in all honesty but I just felt like I just know myself better and you know if there was the opportunity to meet someone cool and awesome and be myself and be loved for it then why the hell not Mm -hmm. I'd love to know you know what you feel like you've learned from the married at first sight experience versus big brother what are your you know two different takeaways from the experiences I think this sounds like the corniest answer and I'm so sorry this is so cheesy but I think just backing yourself and believing in yourself and know that if you're a good person like things just naturally fall into place and trusting your own gut instinct I think when I was 18 in the house like I just my self-worth was like at an all-time low so I I think I I've learned to back myself a lot more than I did 10 years ago. That's for sure. Did you find that your intuition throughout the whole experiment was bang on every time you thought something was up with someone, with the brides or grooms? I think so. But I guess that's open to interpretation. I I think I was pretty spot on. 
Okay, so if we see you smelling something out over the coming episodes, we know that Evelyn's onto it. We're going to place our bets. It's all going to make sense in the next week or so. It's all going to unravel. Oh, my gosh. Well, you seem like a smart girl and a self-aware girl from what we've seen so far. So, I mean, I won't take any doubts when I see you onto something. So... Okay, well, we're going to test your intuition out with a game of fuck, marry, leave. You can't choose your own husband. Okay. And you can choose out of every groom. Okay. Fuck, marry, leave. So I would leave Dan. I would marry Duncan. I think that's an obvious one, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then, oh, who would I fuck? God, this is hard. Is it? Oh, I don't want to say this because I'm friends with the wife. Oh, who cares? Doesn't matter. You're not actually fucking them. Just in theory, in your dreams. Ollie. Oh, 100% babe. Easy also, babe, right? Pete Davidson. Do you not think he looks exactly oh, like Pete I Davidson? I love, oh, I'd love me a mm-hmm. piece of Pete. Love me some Petey. <laughs> There's plenty of pieces to go around, <laughs> isn't there? <laughs> okay. All right, so tell us why you would leave Dan. Mm. Um, you're going to have to wait and see. He just comes across as so nice, doesn't he? Like I said, there's a lot of twists and turns this season. The people that you are like, I love them. They are going to be the ones that are going to do the 360s. The people that you think are the villains, they're also going to give you a few 360 turns. This is why I trust no one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And why would you marry Duncan? It's Duncan. Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Is he just as good looking in real life? I think he's better looking in real life. Oh, that's fine. And he's nice too. It's like, are you a real person? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and on to fucking Ollie, because we all want to fuck Ollie, mm-hmm. don't we? Did you hear that him and Tani, they had a, they have a great sex life apparently. Janelle I'm told sure us last week. I'm sure they do. Yeah. They obviously have amazing chemistry and I think that they're so perfect for each other. Mm. I know, I know. We've been seeing them out and about. Yeah, we saw them at Bunnings. <laughs> I, think I thought there's was a, against your contract. You can't be seen in public. Oh, okay. If they need a screwdriver, they need a screwdriver. (laughs) What's a girl to do? I know, right? (laughs) Something tells me they would be getting other things from Bunnings, but. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to ask you guys fuck, marry, leave. Leave, sorry, yeah. But out of the women. (gasps) Evelyn. Sorry. You're doing us dirty. Sorry. Well, it's too awkward to say you. (laughs) Uh, Okay, fuck, marry, leave. Oh, who do I want to fuck? Um, <laughs> oh, leave Alyssa. She fucking after that cheating thing, you fuck hypocrite, hypocrite. Mm, good point. Man, psst, out of my face. I'm gonna leave Alyssa. I want to fuck. Oh, maybe Claire. I reckon she'll be able to throw it back and bust it open. She's a babe. She's a babe. I might have to agree with you. Right? There. Yeah. She's got that. Yeah. She's like sultry. Yeah. Um. She's right. got something about her. And who do I want to marry? Who do I want to marry? It's hard, right? <sighs> it's a hard game. Probably Sandy. As soon as she walked in, we were like, she's drop dead gorgeous. She's level headed. She's rich. And I would like to be rich. So that's, yeah, that's me. Don't we all? Yeah. Mm, okay. okay. I'd have to agree. Those. That's a good one. Thank you. Okay. I would, I would leave Taylor. Oh, we forgot about Taylor. Taylor. I'm a big negotiator, right? Like I'll yeah. always find a happy medium, middle ground. She's just like, nah, my are way or the highway. Libra? Absolutely not. No, what are you? Capricorn. Capricorn, okay. Yeah. Sorry, did I just do the star sign thing? Oh, like, yuck, sorry. yuck. <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm trying not to say anything. <laughs> um, okay, and then I would marry Janelle. I just think she's so great. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. Or maybe I'd marry Claire after this week. Honestly, I feel like... Yes, she cheated, but then she couldn't keep that on her conscience, so she came clean. So you know that if she's going to do you dirty, she's going to tell you. The way that she's handled herself in that situation I think is really commendable. And then I'm going to fuck you, Evelyn. Oh, You I'll are <laughs> one of the hottest people I've ever seen. Sorry to be Thanks, awkward. Guys. I promise I'm, still not <laughs> I'm not coming to on to you. <laughs> well, maybe we'll flip into a matchmaking service. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. what we can't. That's another episode of We've Done the Maths, a pedestrian TV podcast. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, guys. You guys are awesome. We're just going to have to wait and see what happens between you and Dan. In the meantime, you can catch up on all the goss at Pedestrian TV's newsletter, We've Done the Maths. 
see you next week. Bye.